thank you Fiora for this opportunity and today I want us to talk about the organization of the church. Before we talk about the organization of the church, my name is Pastor Yevon Eric. Let's pray. Thank you Lord for this opportunity. Thank you Lord for you have given us a way in which we can lead your people. Lord, the organization of the church. Lord, continue guiding us so that each and every day we may know what you need of us. We may know that you are the one leading us to be organized in the way you want. Lord, we pray you are Holy Spirit to continue guiding us so that we may understand for sure that you are the God, God of order. In Jesus' name, Amen. Fewer, this time I want us to talk about the organization of the church. What is the meaning of the organization? Organization is the systematic way of leadership. When we talk of leadership, I know, we know how leadership is being done. For example, in our country or in each and every country, there is a way in which people are being led. In a country, we have a president, we have different organizations in which various things are done and this has ensured that the country runs in a systematic way and there is order. Also in the church, in God's church, there is a way in which God needs us to lead its people. Christ mandated us to carry the gospel to the old world to involve and this is involving other Christian members. And how do we carry out the gospel to the world? We have to be organized as the church. When we are carrying out the gospel to the world, there are things we have to do. We have to nurture the Christians. Through nurturing of the Christians, we have to teach them how they should go about. What, is, what are they going to do in the field? What are they going to minister to the world? And that is how we nurture the Christians to take the gospel to the world. Why do we talk about the organization of the church? We talk of the organization of the church because God is a God of order. When we read in the book of 1 Corinthians 14 verse 33, it says, God is not the order of confusion. I think you are marking the word. God is not the order of confusion. God doesn't need confusion in his church. God needs need decency and order. That's why he gave us also a way of governing the church. If there could be no order in which the church is following, I'm rest assured, my fellow viewer, there could be no church and there could be no salvation. The church must have a simple but effective way of leading its members. Let's go and see now, nature of the organization. How is the church of God organized? The first thing, church membership. In order to say there is existence of a church, there should be church membership. What is church membership? Membership shows that you belong to a certain denomination. And what are the qualifications to belong into the organization of God, that is the church? Members of the New Covenant, community of faith, we should be of the New Covenant. What do we mean by saying we should be of the New Covenant? Do you follow the doctrines of the church? Do you understand what the church needs from you? And when you have understand the word covenant and knows to follow it, then exactly you are of the new church, that's the church of God. Faith, you should have faith. God 
is the God who needs us not to do doubt anything about him. We should have faith that for real, this is the true church in which God need us to take the membership. God need us to follow. Membership involves acceptance. We should accept the church. We should accept that the church is leading us toward the salvation, towards the second coming of Jesus Christ. And by doing so, for sure, we are the church members. The second one, membership qualifications. I know we have talked about church membership and we have said some few qualifications. Now we are in the church membership quali qualification. The first one, accept Jesus Christ as the Lord, your Savior. For you to be qualified member, my viewer, you must accept Jesus Christ as the Lord, your Savior. What do we mean by the word accepting Jesus Christ as the Lord, your Savior? Giving yourself fully to the Christ. Giving yourself, giving your soul fully to Jesus Christ. Praying to God that he may help you during your endeavors to actually do as the will of the Lord. Again, we should experience the new path and accept Jesus Christ. Experiencing the, the new path and accepting Jesus Christ is accepting Christ and getting baptized. In Matthew 28 verse 19 to 20, there is something Jesus is telling us. He says, Go then to the world, make, go then to the world, make them my, my disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is assurance in which God is giving us. He say, He's telling us today, go then to the world. After going to the world, what are you going to do? You make them my disciples, and how do you make them? them is disciples. The first you spread the word of God. And how do you spread the word of God? You teach them. What does God need of them? And after teaching them, you baptize them. Baptizing, this is what show us exactly that they have accepted Jesus as their personal savior. And by doing so, my fellow viewer, I'm sure for real, you have made the membership of Christ to grow. The second one again is priesthood of all believers. After accepting Jesus as your personal savior, you don't have to doubt anymore. In 1 Peter 2 verse 5, it says you are the holy nation. You are the chosen. And by that, we are rest assured that God is indeed leading us. God is leading us to the right direction. Special people. You know God using the word special, you are the holy nation. That one is something which should not be taken for granted. You are the holy nation. Holy nation, people of God. And for sure, if you follow Jesus Christ and believe, you will become the holy nation and special people who are ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Again, how should be how should the church be organized? How should the church be organized in order to match with the current society? In Matthew 2 verse 22 verse 2, God is telling us something which is important. Give to Caesar which belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. Give to Caesar what is Caesar and give to God what is God. By telling us so, God needs us to do his work. And how do we give to God what is God? We give to God what is God through paying tithes, through giving tithes, through giving offerings, and that one will help the church 
to go on with this mission. And when it said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, it means we have to give, we have to participate in the government function. And that's why Jesus tells us, leaders are God's, are given to us from God. So we should learn to respect them. And by doing so, we should, we have, by doing so, God will indeed help us to be his fellow members. There are major functions of the church. What is the major functions of the church? The function of the church is worship, to worship. Through coming together, we worship God, we pray God to help us in his day, to help us in our daily function. By coming together, we have to understand various challenges we are passing through. And by doing so, indeed, God is going to make his church come true. And by coming true, we will proclaim the message to the world. The second thing again is instructions in the scriptures. God needs us to read the scriptures and spread the message to the old world. And by doing so, I know God is going to help us. My fellow viewer, today I'm calling you to come to Christ and give your life into the God's ministry. And we are going to pray. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us how to make the organization, how to lead your people. God, continue guiding us so that we may be the chosen people, the holy priesthood priesthood. Lord, guide us in each and every activity in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.